Yo, yo, yo. What's up? I hope I don't get charged for that. Okay, never mind. Scratch that. Um, what's up? We're gonna make a quick little video. I was in prayer the other day and I was asking God, you know, God, what is on your heart? What grieves you? What do you want to talk about today? What are you thinking? Uh, what makes you happy? What's making you sad? How do you feel about your people? What do you want to communicate? And the Lord said to me that it grieves him that people treat him like a genie. And they just grant, he just grants them wishes and then, you know, they're gone. And so I immediately started praying in repenting on behalf of his children because I have found myself in that same position you know things are going good you know there'll be times where things are going good there's nothing wrong and I just neglect him and then when I get in a situation I'm just like oh lord you know do this for me and do that for me and you know rub the genie bottle and you know rub his ego till he shows up and then it's you know he grants me whatever I want and then I'm like oof thanks all right thanks for getting me out of that and then it's like you know I don't talk to him again till the next time that I need something and so I had to really repent not just for myself but just on behalf of his children because there are times where we just get so caught up in self that even when we pray it's about us like when we praise it's about us god thank you for doing this for me thank you for me for waking me up for giving me this and doing this for me and lord do this for me and help help me do this and help me with that and help me and help me 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 instead of going before the throne of it's about you i thank you for you I thank you for your grace, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your compassion, for your grandeur, for your majesty, for your holiness, because there is none like you. Who can do what you do? Who can be such a creator? Who can, you know, carve mountains out? Who can, you know, carve seas out? Who can separate the earth from the sky? Like, who can do those things? You know what I mean? And just sit in complete adoration for him. And it's really... He really wants, I feel, as though for people to really, when going before him, consider him to be who he is. Consider him to be God. Consider him to be Jireh. Consider him to be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the maker of the heaven and the earth and creator of all things and judge of all men and, you know, really go before him and appreciate him for who he is and not what he does or what he can do because that's just like in your personal life you know I, I've seen on social media how women and men are like you know you wanted me and what I could do for you but you didn't want me and I feel as though I feel as though that that's how God is about himself you know what I mean like you want him but you don't want him you know what I'm saying? Like, you want what he can do for you. You want all the glitz and glamour. Like, you want the benefits from him. But you don't want to be committed to him. And, like, that is not anything that's new that's been said. You know what I mean? Like, we really treat God, like Michael Todd said, like a side chick. We treat him like a side chick. We want the benefits of being with him. But we don't want to make a commitment to him. And it's like, you know, he not Aladdin. You know, he's not the genie from Aladdin. He's not. He's not this big blue guy sitting in a bottle waiting to get out. Like, no, he's a supreme ruler. He's, he's you know, everything. <laughs> he He doesn't have to wait on us. You know what I mean? To do anything, to move, to, to be God, to he do stuff just because he in the mood. He's in the mood to bless. He's in the mood to forgive. He's in the mood to open doors. He's in the mood to do all of these things for you. And it just grieves him how ungrateful we as a people are and how ungrateful we treat him whenever he shows up and rescues us from ourselves or rescues us from our enemies or rescues us from our family or friends or, you know, exes or whatever the 
person or thing is. He comes and he rescues us. And we just treat him like a genie in a bottle. Like, whoo, appreciate you, guy. Get me out of this one, man. You the one. <laughs> you the one. And then, all right, I'll holla at you. Until the next time we're in a situation, it's like, God, if you could just get me out of this. Some some don't even make no promise. Like, if you just get me out of this. And that's it. It's not, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to quit my ways. And, you know, I ain't going to hurt nobody else no more. It's just, if you get me out of this. Okay. But the beautiful thing about God is he'll come and he'll rescue you. He knows your heart. He knows that you're not going to do it, but he shows up and he continues to do it to let you know that he hears you, to let you know that he's going to be there for you, to let you know that he will rescue you, to let you know that he will be a refuge, to let you know he shows up for you, not for anything else, but for you. And maybe you'll get it one day. Like I'm here. I'm here for you. When you going to be here for me? Like, that's not, you know, I don't believe that that's what God says because he's not a tit for tat God. But, you know, he does have feelings. He's got feelings. And I don't even think we consider to ask God, how are you feeling today? What's on your heart? What's on your mind? What do you want to communicate? What grieves you? What are you happy about today? What did you do today? You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 a relationship. And so, we got to do better. We got to do better. He's not a genie in a bottle. He's a supreme God. He's the ultimate judge. He doesn't have to do anything. He's not required. He's not entitled to bless you. You are not deserving. You are not owed anything. It's not a right. You don't have rights. You don't have a right. It is a privilege. It is a privilege to call upon his name. It's a privilege to even acknowledge him. It's a privilege, especially thinking about, you know, reading in the Bible where they could only say the name of God. They can only say God once a year once a year and because of the death of Jesus Christ and the blood that we have and the reconnection and the new covenant in him we can call him at any time we can go before him at any time it is a privilege not a right it is a privilege not a right so I just you know I just wanted to share it my my encounter my time and you know this is God's scope. It's God's scope, his vision, his view, his perspective as he uses me and as he deals with me through life and, and through various situations. And so this isn't like the end all be all, like you got to do it this way. And no, 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 no. This is God's scope, God's vision, his perspective, his views through me and through my life and what he communicates to me which ultimately affects other people because again as I've always said I'm not the only one going through something I'm not the only person on the, I, I'm not that lucky to be the only person on the earth to go through something you know no matter what it is whether it's you know a celebration a graduation a, a death heartache betrayal, suicide, depression. I'm not the only person. I'm not the only person. Like if you realize that your life is not for you, like you've heard my life is not my own. It's really not because your life is not for you. You are not put on this earth for you. You are here as a living testimony and everything that you go through is to pull somebody else out. You know what I mean? Like your mistakes as I said um, in a conference that I went to, your mistakes is somebody else's miracle. 
Because what you deem as a mistake, what you feel as though, you know, is a mess up and you've screwed your whole life up and this, you know, I wish I would have never done. And you have that whole regret is a miracle for somebody else who's in that same position, who's like, I'm not worthy. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. I don't know how it's going to be done. And then they come across you and they come across your story and they come across your journey and they're like, wow, I didn't think that I could do it. I didn't think that I would ever have, you know, the ability to get out of this situation that I'm in. And they see somebody else who's done it. They see somebody else who has persevered. They see somebody else who has gone through, uh, no matter the persecution, no matter the backbiting, no matter what people have said about them, the judgment and ridicule that they've gone through, they have made it through. And because of that, somebody else is receiving their miracle. It's a mistake for you, but it's a miracle for somebody else. And it's only because of the privilege of Jesus Christ that they are able to go through that, that they're able to be delivered. Because I promise you, they have called on the name that is above every name to get them out. And they didn't turn back. It wasn't no genie in a bottle experience for them. It wasn't a genie in a bottle encounter for them. It was a, I am at the end of myself. And if you don't do it, I don't know how it's going to be done. If you don't do it, I don't know what's going to happen. The results are on you. Here I am, but the results are on you. So let's not treat God like a genie in a bottle. It grieves him. It hurts his heart. It hurts his feelings. He's more than that. Just like you are more than what people say about you. Just like you are more. You can have a servant's heart, but you are not here. You are not a doormat to let people walk all over you and let them treat you however they want to and do whatever they want to do and take your niceness for weakness and your kindness for weakness. That's not it. You are more than what people say about you. You know what I mean? Like you got, you got that Clark Kent going on. You're more than that. You Superman. You know what I mean? Like you have more than what meets the eye. You have more to you than what meets the eye. And so it is with God. He's more than that. He's more than just a a blessing giver and houses and cars and lands and property and, and money. He's more than that. He's a deliverer. He's a mind. When they say mind regulated, look here. You could have lost your mind several times. You could have had a snapping point at at any moment. You could have snapped and went crazy. He is more than just a giver of finances and an elevator in your job. He is more than that. Because let me tell you, the things that could have happened to you, how he works overtime to protect you just for you. The things that you don't even know about, the accidents that you didn't even know. He shielded you from. The robberies that you don't even know he shielded you from. The plans that the enemy and plots that the enemy has for you. That you don't even know about. There are things that you see and then there are things that you don't see. So there is more to him than just houses, cars, land, property, buildings, money. He's more than that. He's more than that. Give him a try. I just admonish you to give him a try. 30 days. What do you have to lose? Nothing. You can pray for five minutes for 30 days. You have nothing to lose. My God. And everything to gain. He says, I come to give you life. And life more abundantly. He is an abundant God. He gives overflow. That's what he does because it pleases him to do. It pleases him to do. So I admonish you. Give him a try. I did, and I ain't going back. I I can't go back. Like William McDowell said, I ain't going back. I ain't going to be able to do it. I ain't going to be able to do it. So it was just something that was on me. On my heart to share, I do as I'm told. Y'all have a great day, a great evening, great morning, whatever time you are watching this. And I just want to pray as I usually do um, just for 
your sanity just for the covering to be on you and and that you see God and encounter him in a different way. So, Father, I bless you. I thank you for the people who are watching. I thank you that it's not by accident, incident, or or coincidence that they have come across this video. I bless you, Lord, that you see them, that you hear them, God, even in the midnight hours, in the late night hours, in the morning, God, even at 10 o'clock in the morning, Lord, you see their tears. You hear their cries, oh, Lord, you are listening to their hearts, Father. And so I bless you, oh, God, that you see them, that you let them know that you are with them always, Lord, according to your word, that you will never leave them nor forsake them, oh, God. Thank you that you are a promise keeper, oh, Lord, and that your word never falls short. Short. You have said, O oh Lord, in your word that your word will go out and it will not return to you void and it will come back to you, O oh Father. Once it has accomplished it's everything that it's been set out to do, it cannot return to you until then, Lord. So we thank you, O oh God, that you are more than what we have considered you to be. You more, you are more than what we boxed you in our minds to be, God. You are bigger than that. Whatever we can most grandiously conceive. I don't even know if that's a word, but I give it to you. Whatever we can conceive, God, you are bigger than that. You have seen us. You've heard us. You've loved us through it all. And so forgive us, O oh Father, for treating you like a genie in a bottle, Lord. Forgive us, O oh Father, for stroking your ego only to get you to come to see about us. Have mercy upon us, O oh Father. Most merciful God, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us, O oh Father, for treating you as a side chick, Lord. For, for publicly uh, denying you, O oh God. But privately wanting to spend time with you and rub all on you and, and cuddle up with you, O oh God. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what you've done for us. Hear our cry. Bless us, O oh Lord, and keep us in every endeavor that we do. In your son Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Glory to God and amen. Have a great week. You be great. May your week be awesome. And, and, and may the grace of God and the favor of God fight for you as the people did over them chicken sandwiches. Y'all be blessed.